You know, there's a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. And I think a lot of times uh, that can be really powerfully true. There's actually a very striking picture that deals with the fruits of anger. Abel brought a firstling, a flock, to sacrifice before the Lord God Almighty, whereas Cain offered fruit from the ground. Both set fire to the wood on the rough stone altar, but while the smoke from Abel's rose straight to the sky, Cain is dashed downward by the wind. Cain turned toward his brother, who is kneeling devoutly, eyes lifted to God in prayer. God accepts Abel's offering, and Cain is angry. We see the offended brother lying dead upon the ground while his brother gazes upon him with horror-stricken eyes. As he awakens from his passion to realize his sin, a serpent is seen crawling away. Sometimes art really does capture reality, doesn't it? And this actually records in a picture the first murder in scripture of a brother upon brother. As I continue my series on the Ten Commandments, we'll look at the commandment today that says, uh, you shall not kill. And actually, if you look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for that is actually murder. So it's, you shall not murder. Murder is the intentional ending of an innocent human life. And in the Old Testament, it actually was considered a capital offense. Uh, it affirms the reality that humans are created in the image of God. And they're given life by God uh, from the womb to the tomb. Uh, and that the reality is all human life to God is sacred and is to be honored and protected both by uh, the Lord God Almighty and by humanity as well. In fact, if you look at the Old Testament, if somebody killed somebody, there were actually cities of refuge within Israel that they could go to that next of kin wouldn't, wouldn't be able to enter to kill them uh, for revenge. So, you know, the reality is God really honors human life in every way, shape, and form. And also in the New Testament, Jesus teaches about the danger of anger and its relationship to murder. In fact, as he's expanding on the commandments and that uh, the love of God and love of neighbor fulfill the law and the prophets, he shares specifically about anger. And he says, you know, you've heard it is written, uh, you shall not murder, but I say to you that if you have anger in your heart towards your brother, that you've already committed murder. Um, and so uh, I'm sure all of you are glad to be here today to hear that great news. Um, anger is a very powerful emotion. I, I think it's one of the most powerful emotions there, are, there can be, other than, of course, uh, the emotion of love. And the reality is, is that we as human beings get angry. Uh, it happens as part of our lives. You might be going along fine, tralalaling along your way, and everything's great, and then all of a sudden, somebody pulls in front of you. One of those famous Naples turns from the far right lane all the way over to the left turn lane <laughs> in about 20 feet. Um, or something happens in a conversation over the phone. Somebody says something to you, or you say something to them, and automatically the, the tempers start to flare. And so this is very much part of our human experience. Everybody gets angry. In fact, it's, it's normal. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting as we look at our scripture today in Ephesians, it's pretty amazing about this whole subject of anger. It says, be, second, second sentence, be angry, but do not sin. So even in the scripture, it talks about the reality of being angry and yet not sinning. We read the scripture about Jesus when he came into the temple, he noticed the money changers, if you will, in the narthex. And as he was coming into the synagogue, he got so angry, it said he fashioned a whip out of cords. So he took time, this was premeditated, and then he destroyed the tables and drove the money changers out of the temple and said to everybody, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. So there's an example of righteous anger, and so that can happen uh, in people's lives. My experience with that is that, for the most part, the anger I've seen in myself and the anger I've experienced from other human beings tends not to be righteous anger. So I would, just, I would just caution us to qualify all of our anger as righteous anger, because uh, that probably is not the case. This is a really great prescription. It says, be angry, but do not sin. 
Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devil. Now, this is a great, great idea. If you're angry, uh, let's just say you have one of those moments of anger today. Uh, this counsel is really wise. It says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. What is it basically saying? Work it out before you go to sleep. That's what it's saying. Don't, don't go on with your anger for three and four and five days and, and let it stew or four and five and six decades. I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, but, the, but what this scripture is saying to us is something very wise. You know what? Don't let anger linger. Work it out. Try to reconcile. Try to make, a, make amends so that you can move on. That's how important it is. In fact, as you go down again through this scripture, it says, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another. So again, there Paul in Ephesians is going through a litany of what anger looks like. You know, the reality is you get angry. We all get angry. We know that's true. But then we let it fester in our spirit and it grows. You know, again, a lot of times you, you say to yourself, well, you know what? I'm just going to forget about that. I was angry, but I'm just going to push that down and move on. Well, the only problem with that is anger doesn't work that way. Uh, anger, unless you work through it and forgive and let it go, actually, if you repress it, it grows. It grows even greater. It grows into malice. It grows into unforgiveness. It grows into slander. You end up talking to other people. Let, wait till I tell you what this person did to me. Wait till I tell you about what they did to me and they're part of our family and they keep on doing it. You know how that goes, right? That's how we operate. And so this scripture is saying, do not do that, but be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. So um, let me share some thoughts with you about how you might be able to deal with your anger. And let me just be honest with you, I'm still working on this as well. It's a lifelong process. We'll probably be working on it in eternity as well too. <laughs> so um, the reality is, is that we begin to be honest about the anger. And, and that would be the first thing I would say to you is if, if you're angry about something, be honest about what it is. Don't lie to yourself, don't lie to another person. You know, sometimes somebody will call you on something and say, you know what, it, it seems like you're angry. Oh, I'm not angry. Right? And then you press a little bit harder. Well, it just seems like you're kind of upset. I'm not upset. It's like holding the mirror up. He's got to hold the mirror up. Right? And so one of the most important first steps you and I can make is just be honest when we're angry. If you're angry about something, it's normal. It's part of being a human being. You need to be honest about it. The next thing I would say about your anger is, is simply then ask the question, what are you angry about? What are you angry about? And try to be spe as specific about it as possible. Now, you know, the reality is sometimes people make us angry and we're upset for a good reason. It's okay if you're angry about that. If somebody does something that's wrong to you and you're upset about it, then in some way, shape, or form, it needs to be addressed. Um, and so... That's important for you to realize. You need to get a little bit more to the root of why you're really angry. And maybe that'll take a little bit of time. Maybe it take a few hours. Maybe it take a day or two to kind of think through how you're going to share about it or talk about it. I would suggest that when you're angry, you don't go into a conversation with the person immediately because usually what happens based on our collective experience is it escalates, doesn't it? It gets worse. And especially if you're dealing with somebody who's a hothead, it's going to get really bad. And you know that from experience, and the hothead knows that as well. So one of the best things you can do with your anger is be honest about why you're angry, be honest about why you're upset, and take a step back from it. That's the, that's the thing we usually don't do, but there's a lot of wisdom in that. Just take a step back, take a time out, go for a long walk, think and pray it through, and begin to come to a place where you can respond to what happened rather than react. That's one of the things I'm learning. I'm still learning, but it's one of the things I'm learning. Joe, you need to respond to what happened instead of react to what happened. Use your brain, think it through, pray it through, 
and then give a response uh, in a way that's clear and powerful. Let me take you into my marriage counseling for just a moment. Um, I work with people on an assertive communication. So when you work through your anger and you're able to respond, instead of saying, you, 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 you can use an I statement. I am upset about what took place and this is why I feel this way, using I statements. You don't accuse, you use assertive statements using I and talk and share about your feelings. That's very powerful, very powerful. And it changes the whole conversation. Um, pray for God's righteousness in you. You know, it says in James, the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. That's what it says in James. It's not one of my favorite verses in the Bible, <laughs> but it's there. And it's there because it's giving me a new direction about what the righteousness of God looks like. Again, we're human beings, we get angry. Even God gets angry about some things. It's righteous anger, it's righteous judgment. But the question is, what do you do with it? And maybe more importantly for some of us, what does anger do to you? What does anger do to you? The anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. So again, there is another reason why we need to step back for a moment, for a moment from the anger ask some questions about why I'm so angry about this and upset, and then begin to prayerfully reflect about how I should respond in this, to this. And Lord, what would you have me do? Oh, imagine asking that question of the Lord about your anger. What would you have me do about this feeling of being really upset and really angry about what happened here? Lord, what is your righteousness in this situation? Well, I bet some of you haven't asked that question before as you've been angry. That's a different question to ask. It comes out of James, the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. So then begin to ask the question in that moment, Lord, what would your righteousness look like in this situation? Maybe it means keeping your mouth shut and praying that God would intervene. Maybe it means saying something in a more assertive way that is powerful and loving, but needs to confront the situation. But again, that changes the way that you're dealing with the situation, which is very, very important, especially in the hour in which we live. We live in a moment where people are acting out of anger. They're reacting. They're using it as a weapon and a tool. They're using it to induce fear in other people and get what they want. And the only way we can battle that is in the spirit of the Lord, because that's coming from the pit of hell. Which brings me to my next point from the scripture. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Again, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. <laughs> That'll be a lifetime of working on that one. Matthew 5, 44. Thanks a lot, Jesus. He just hits all the good ones all at one time. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Have you ever tried to put this into practice? My gosh. It's gotta be one of the most difficult words in the Bible. And you know what, let me just say, this scripture is humanly impossible to fulfill. You will not be able to fill this, fulfill this scripture as a normal human being. This is something that only can be fulfilled through divine power, through the power of the Holy Spirit, because this is a divine action. It's not a human action. Human beings don't love their enemies. That's not a normal thing to do. As a human being, we fight our enemies and go against them and try to overcome them. That is the normal human thing to do. But the divine thing to do is to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. That's why there's a cross in the middle of our church. And that's what he did. And that's part of how he redeemed the world. He redeemed the hatred and the anger and the murderous spirit of the world. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Into your hands I commend my spirit. He overcame that through his sacrifice and rising from the dead. And God's approval and God's grace and God's power was upon him. So again... 
One of the realities for us as we reflect on this scripture about thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not murder is the reality is that for most of us here that are in this sanctuary or maybe watching online, we've never murdered anybody. We've never killed anybody, but we've had a lot of experience with anger. And again, Jesus's words to us, if you carry anger and judgment in your heart towards your brother, may I add towards your sister, then you're already guilty of murder. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So be honest about it. Confess it and come before the Lord. The other thing I want to say to you is that some of you maybe have generational patterns of anger in your family. You have a mom or a dad or you have a grandparent or a great grandparent where you know what? There was some serious anger in the family. All I know is that I know some families very personally where if some person got angry in the kitchen, plates would go flying. Literally, I would just clear out of the kitchen and I mean, plates would go flying, busted up all over the place. And some of you maybe grew up in families in that, like that as well, where you know what, something went down, the rod was coming out of the closet. I didn't, go, I didn't grow up in the time of uh, timeout. Let's just put it that way. I was waiting for the timeout for my parent to get tired enough to move on and put the rod down. That was the time out I was looking for. And some of you as well. So again, we come from these families where there is a lot of anger. We need discipline, absolutely. But there's a lot of anger and there's a pattern of anger that's going back for a long time. And it can be explosive. It can be scary. Uh, you still have memories of that even in this moment. So there needs to be healing of that. There needs to be healing of it generationally in terms of the anger that maybe was too much uh, and that you might begin to be, have healing in your spirit to move more in the direction of love and wisdom and God's grace. In 1960, Adolf Kors III of Kors Brewery was kidnapped. There was a ransom that was paid for his life to be able to set him free and the kidnappers killed him anyways. Adolf Kors IV, the 15 year old son had a hatred for the killer of his father, Joseph Corbett. In 1975, young Kors became a Christian, divested himself of his interest in the family business and went on with his life. One day, Kors visited Corbett at the maximum security unit of Colorado's Cannon Penitentiary and Corbett refused to see him. Undeterred, Kors left the Bible for him inscribed with the following message. I'm sorry that we could not meet. As a Christian, I am summoned by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to forgive you. I ask you to forgive me for the hatred I've held in my heart for you. Later, Kors confessed, I have a love for that man that only Jesus Christ could have placed in my heart. <laughs> 